Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy and welcome to this tutorial on creating a Ajax loading graphic when Ajax and content into a container. Now I'm going to show you how this works, uh, the end result first. Um, basically what we've got on the page here is a link that's going to load some Ajax content or Ajax some content into this container. As you can see, hit load file to load a file into this container. Uh, now this is going to be a PHP file, but don't worry if you're not from a PHP background or if you're not uh, Ajaxing a PHP file in. Uh, this will work for anything that takes a significant amount of time to load. Uh, I'm just going to be using PHP because we can use the um, the sleep function to pause this script as an example. So we'll take a look at that uh, a bit later. So uh, load file, when we hit it, what's going to happen is we get this faded effect and this loading graphic here and then uh, the content will change. So this content has been loaded via an Ajax request. So this is how everything's going to work. Uh, in this tutorial what we're going to be doing is obviously writing the JavaScript that's going to handle this Ajax request and we're also going to be creating a class, a loader class that's going to actually um, display this um, effect on the screen essentially and we're going to have the background from that container as that little spinner graphic. So uh, that's the example, let's go ahead and start to write some code. Okay, so we're over to our text editor. Um, you can see I've already got some markup here. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll go through everything and explain how everything is going to interact. Um, but the first thing probably to do is take a look at our directory structure and the kind of files that we're going to be using. So index.html uh, index is going to be the file that we're viewing in our browser. And we've got four folders here. Now, um, the folders bear some significance depending on what you're doing. Uh, but first of all, we've got this JavaScript folder with a primary uh, JavaScript file in. We've also got images, which has this spinner graphic here, which we're going to be using, obviously. We've got a CSS file called stars.css within our CSS directory. And within an Ajax directory, we've got the, the file that we're Ajaxing uh, to, which is delay.php. Uh, and we'll take a look at that and how that is going to work to sort of uh, create some kind of significance to this example in a moment. Okay, so... Um, the markup on index.html, uh, we've got just a an anchor here with um, a load file as the text, which we've already seen, and we've got a class called load. So we're going to be a, a, appending an event handler to this to actually Ajax the content in. Uh, now, you may already know how to Ajax content in, but we're going to start from scratch just so we can see um, a method of doing this. And this is going to be an isolated example, so it will, will just load content into this one container. Uh, if you've got multiple places that you're Ajaxing to, you might need to obviously change this around um, and obviously down here we've got our container which just contains the default text at the moment and when we uh, load in we're going to replace the content with whatever's uh, coming out from our PHP file uh, importantly we've got our style sheet linked at the top here and then we've got our scripts at the bottom so this one is just loading jQuery because we're using the jQuery library and the Ajax method that's available and then we have this primary.js file which we've just looked at in our directory structure so let's go ahead and start to look at how we would write this code. Now the first thing to do probably is create this loader class that's going to allow us to create that nice effect over the container. So you'll see here that at the moment this isn't working because there's no JavaScript content. I've blanked all the uh, the documents. So let's go ahead and create this container. Now what's going to happen is when we click load file before we send the Ajax request, we're going to be inserting uh, an element into here using jQuery. So this element is going to have a class of loader. Now we don't need to put any content within here because uh, we're going to handle that in the styles. So if we go over to styles.css, you can see we've got our container class here. Um, we've got the width and the height set, the border, some padding and a margin at the top. And we've also got position relative. This is because we're going to be placing an absolutely positioned uh, element within this container. Um, so this basically here uh, is these styles. So our loader class here is going to be the, uh, first of all, the opacity change. We're going to set an RGBA background to this and we're also going to then have the background as this spinner. Um, so don't worry about this. We're going to be previewing this as we go along. Uh, you see that in my markup, I've already created this so we can now start to preview stuff. Uh, and obviously we've got this um, spinner graphic here so we can incorporate that as well. So for the loader, we need a position of absolute. And we're also going to set this to the top and the left. So the very top and the very left. And we're going to create a width of 100% and a height of 100%, basically so it fills the entire container. So at the moment, 
nothing shows up because we haven't set any backgrounds or anything like that. What we're going to do is I'm going to say background and we're first of all going to create this faded effect. So I'm going to use the RGBA in CSS and we're going to set this to white and we'll have a 0.8 here. So that's the opacity. So now when I refresh, you see that this has faded. The container, if I inspect this, is now filled with this loader element. So this is the main container and this is the loader element filling up 100% of the height, 100% of the width. Now, in addition to this, we need the spinner. So what we can actually do is, because I've used the background shorthand property, I can go in and add a URL here or a, a background image. So in this case, it will be dot dot dash because we're going back a directory into our images directory. So images, and this will be spinner.gif. Now uh, let's go ahead and preview this. Wow, that looks uh, nice, but this isn't how we want it to work. So what we need to do is we need to um, position this and also set a no repeat on. So no repeat. This will just mean that only one instance of it uh, will be shown like so. But now we need it in the very, very center. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add 50%. And this is the same as doing 50%, 50%. So 50% will just uh, place it in the very center of the container. So just like that, by creating a class for that element that we're going to later inject uh, when we do our Ajax request, uh, that's basically filled up that entire space, hidden, uh, well, set the opacity essentially for the back backend content uh, or the background content, and then we've added this spinner. So now what we can do is now that we're satisfied with how that's looking, we can go ahead and get rid of this uh, because we're not going to uh, include that initially. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and over to our primary.js file and we are going to actually uh, write the JavaScript for this. Uh, so let's go over to our browser and just refresh so we can get rid of that. Brilliant. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a sort of object called res. Now this might be an object um, globally in your uh, JavaScript files, uh, but otherwise, um, you know, I'm just using this as, as an example. And like I said, it's an is isolated example. So I'm going to create an object called uh, res. And within here, I'm going to create the element that's going to represent this loader graphic. So what I need to do is I'm going to say loader and I'm going to create a JavaScript obj uh, jQuery object. And in here, we're going to set a class of loader. So what this has done is it's created a div element. So with a starting div tag and an ending div tag, and uh, we have a class of loader applied to this. And what we're also going to do is we're going to cache the container selector. So, you know, uh, good practice. Make sure we've got a comma just after here. So container is going to select our container. So this will be selecting this entire container here. So um, let's go ahead and just close this. We don't need this. And we'll speak about this PHP file in just a moment. So down here, we want to set an event handler for this load um, this load button, essentially, or this link. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say a.load. And we're going to use the on method. And we're going to say on click and perform this callback. So what this is going to do is for now, let's just say alert one so we can see how that's handled just for anyone that's unsure so load file and we get an event handler um, return this uh, this block of code perfect so we're obviously not going to be alerting one but we're going to be using the ajax method available from the jquery library so we're going to ajax and uh, we're going to specify the files that we're using uh, or the file that we're using so in this case it's going to be ajax forward slash delay dot php now that's the file that we've got here so i'll briefly explain what this is now i've put a sleep on this of three seconds simply to, so we can delay the execution of this php file and we can actually see the ajax loader in progress or we can see it loading for three seconds and then we're echoing out this content so this is the content that's going to be placed into the container now, like I said, you might not be working with a PHP file, you might be working with a large XML file or something like that, and then you might be processing that within jQuery. Uh, but this is just an example because it's really, really easy to do. So we know what delay.php looks like, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define uh, functions based on what's going to happen uh, within this Ajax request. So you might have seen stuff like success. So when this has been successfully Ajax to, we will perform actions here. 
but we're going to include one called before send. So very straightforwardly named, before send is going to do something before this is sent. So for example, alert one, and then here we can say alert two. So when I click this, um, we're going to perform this Ajax to this file. Before this is sent, we're going to alert one, and then on success, we're going to alert two. So you'll see the delay will get this alert up. When we click OK, we'll get a three second delay, and then we'll alert two. So let's go ahead and check this out. So refresh, one, we wait a few seconds, and then we get two up. So that's essentially the uh, delay that we've created in our PHP file, uh, the three second delay. So let's go ahead and get rid of these alerts. Cool, so before we send this, we want to incorporate the loader. So we want the loader to initiate exactly as we click that button and before the Ajax request is sent. So we're gonna access our res object and we're gonna say res.container, which is this container here, dot append, and we want to append res.loader. So we're appending this div that we've created. So now what's gonna happen is when we refresh and click load file, we've appended this div to here and it will load, 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 and you know nothing's really happening at the moment because on success, we're not doing anything. So on success, what we want to do is go ahead and remove this loader. So res.container.find res.loader remove. So let me go ahead and explain this a bit. Again, we're um, accessing this cached selector up here. We're finding the loader that we created in there or we appended to that earlier, and then we're removing that element. So now what we're going to see, instead of the one alert and then the two alert, we're going to click it. It's going to load for about three seconds and then it will remove it. Okay. So that's essentially the meat of everything that we're doing. The only thing we can do now is sort of demonstrate the fact that the data might be pulled in. So within success, we have this data um, that we can access. So data in here as a parameter will pull in the data from this file. So in this case, what we can do is we can just say res.container.html. So use the HTML method and then pop basically the data that comes back from this file into the container and then it removes the loader. So let's go ahead and check this out. When we go ahead and click load file, we wait, we wait about three seconds and there we go. The container or oh, the overlay is removed and then the data has been pulled into there. So obviously in your application, you might be doing something a lot different to this. You might be returning the HTML uh, or using the HTML method to put the data in there. That's absolutely fine. But you might be doing a lot of other processing in here. So uh, you could have some processing going on here if you wanted, anything that you're doing. But the overall idea of this is that we've now quickly and easily created a loading effect uh, as we Ajax to a file. So that's basically how we create a nice overlay when we're Ajaxing to larger files that might take a while to load.